business like a criminal. Everybody know me, they say that she go. Lipstick, liner, lashes for celebrities. And if she looking good, then you say she be. Oh, you think you know me? Probably Instagram. Reposting my picture saying you're a fan. No need for a filter, cause my beat is ill. Have you looking good? Man, it looks good to kill. Hey guys, Tatiana Ward here. Thank you so much for joining me. In this video, I use a lot of new cool products um, that are different to me from foundation to eyelashes to uh, lipstick to it's almost as if everything is new. And for the most part, it's my first time using every single one of those things. So you're seeing me use it for the first time as I'm filming. I wanted to make something that was office appropriate. So this overall is a very simplified makeup process. It may not seem that simple when you're watching it, but that's also because I'm explaining it in detail and the explanation of it can make it seem more complicated than it really is. I made the eyes super simple. Um, and by super simple, I mean there's three eyeshadows here. I think it goes without saying that you adjust it to what you like and what suits you and serves you. So with all of that being said, let's get right to it. Okay guys, I started out by priming my eye with my usual painterly paint pot from MAC. Okay, and I'm gonna be working with eyeshadows pretty much only out of this palette. This is the OPV Gorgeous palette. And you see there are some gorgeous colors in there. There are some mattes and there are also some shimmers, so it's a mixed palette. Starting with a fluffy brush, I'm gonna use this color right here. And I'm using just a no-name brand fluffy brush, great transitional color. What I'm realizing with this palette is that some of these colors are stronger, more pigmented than others. The second color that we're about to move into, I realize is not as pigmented as I wanted it to be, but rather than move around, I wanted you guys to see that you can work with whatever it is that you have. That second color is this one right here, smack dab in the center of the palette. And I'm focusing that in my crease. And let me not be dramatic here. I mean, this is only my second time dipping into the palette, but I got a good color payoff just with one swoop from our first color. I am super duper hot. Excuse me. And moving on to the lid. So this color right here, this shimmery kind of champagne-y color, that's one that's actually pigmented and that I really, really like. That is what I'm using on my lid. Super pretty, right? It's kind of got a pinky, rosy color to it, which is really pretty too. I'm just using a flat eyeshadow brush for this. And in order to smoke out the end of the eye subtly, I wanna go back into that brown that we put right into our crease. This brush that I'm using and switching to, by the way, is the same one that I used directly in the crease with this same color. This is an E45 from Sigma Cosmetics. Okay, so three colors and we have nearly a full look for the eyeshadow look. That's how simple I like it to be, um, especially if you're running out the door. And the fact that it's all from one palette is even better. For brows, I've been obsessing over Benefit Cosmetics Brow, just their line of brow stuff. This is another product that they sent to me called Kaboom. So the lid screws off and you have a paste in there and then you could pluck this off and that's a brush. I'm just getting used to the feel of this product, um, but I realized that the brow pencil that you guys have been seeing me use lately is definitely, it's the same color, they're both number threes, but the paste, I think, um, fills in the gaps of the brow a little bit more, which also gives it more of a blunt and harsh kind of look. Now, the number three, I like the way that it fills in the hair of my brow, but I need something a little bit darker to place in the areas that I don't have hair, meaning like where I'm trying to perfect it and I don't really have hair down here. So I need something a little bit darker instead of this color. I've been using my spiked brow pencil for that but I figured I would try something new. So this is a product that Lancome sent to me called Monsieur Big. They have a whole line in Monsieur Big. It looks like a crayon, which automatically kind of turns me off because I like something that's thin and pointed so that I can make hair-like strokes, but it comes and rolls off way easier than my spiked brow pencil would, so that's the advantage to it. I don't even have to press, it's just coming right off. That is definitely an advantage to the product. And although that Kaboom product is still the same color, like I said, the result gives me a little bit darker of a brow, but I don't mind that right now because I have these dark, very dark roots. <coughs> Excuse me. Woo. Just to mattify my face, I'm gonna use this. It is labeled as a primer, um, but I don't really believe in primers. It's not 
going to make my makeup last so much longer. The benefit of it and why I like using it is because it just mattifies my face. So where I'm slightly shiny right now, I can get rid of that shine before putting on my foundation. Yeah, and coming back to the brows, I don't really like doing uh, reviews of products and giving you my two cents on product because one man's trash is another man's treasure, really. And I use what I use to get the results that I get on myself and other people, but it doesn't mean that it cancels out any other product. There's very rarely been a time or, or a product where I said, oh my God, absolutely not. This is trash. I definitely have my preferences. So I really don't believe in right or wrong products. I just believe in knowing how to use what it is you're trying to use to the best of your ability. I, I'm that confident in my ability. And also, different strokes for different folks, what you like to wear to work, you might consider this, you know, there's somebody at your job who is going to be a hater and is like, oh my God, that is so extreme. I think that if you're wearing something and it's executed well, even the biggest hater might have to just be like, I mean, it looks nice, but it's just a lot of makeup. Well, honey, some of us roll out of bed and still need the glamour, honey. Okay, I'm using a foundation that I have never used before right now. When I'm doing other people, it is always my preference to use creams. And I learned about this product because I was researching super dark foundations because even if you're light skin and didn't realize, I'm sure you've heard a lot this week about Rihanna's product line and God bless her for keeping in mind the dark skin woman. So weeks prior, I mean, honestly, I didn't even know she was coming out with a line until it came out. I don't be paying attention. Weeks uh, prior, I was just doing research and came across a company called Koivoka. I'm going to say that's what it's called, Koivoka. And once I came across this color, I was flabbergasted. I was like, oh my God, that is amazing. But then she really floored me with this one. And I'm just totally obsessed with this. I haven't even gotten to use it yet. The darkest thing that I've ever found. She hand makes all of her product. She is black owned out of, I think um, either Maryland or Virginia or maybe DC. I don't know if you can even see that, but these are the products that I actually carry in my kit. I haven't even done somebody this dark since I've gotten this, but I already put this in my kit because that's just a must. I mean, they're just automatically going into my kit. No questions asked. I don't care if I like it or not. It's hard to find product that dark. So I will learn to love it. Okay, so that color that I just used then was Kiri. It's a little too yellow. You could see that. Um, it's not uncommon for me to mix colors. In fact, that's what I normally do on every single person. I'm typically mixing colors on the back of my hand. See, that's bringing me down some. It's warming me up some. I like the coverage of this. It would have been better and easier applied had I mixed them on the back of my hand first. I think that um, Rihanna releasing, you know, 46 shades is amazing. Um, but I think it's a common misconception that you can just walk into Sephora and buy one color that suits you. Because 46 colors, I don't know, we might just be able to walk into the store and just pick one color and it's our color. But most lines do not offer that many. And even if they do offer that many, it's just too complicated than to say you are one color. So I, even with my drugstore foundation that I normally use on myself, I have two different colors. And depending upon what year, it, what time of the year it is, if I'm a little tan, I'm gonna have to rely more on the darker color. If it's winter time, more so on the lighter color, but it's a mixing process for me. And I mix them until I get it the way that I want it. Now, for those of you who are rushing out the door to work, you might just put on that one light color, like that two yellow color that I had on, throw that on and balance it out with a powder that's a little too dark for you. And I am cool with that. But yeah, another common misconception is that you can only conceal with concealer. And that is not true. You have full coverage foundations that you can absolutely use as concealers. I have super, super dark circles under my eyes. So that doesn't necessarily always work for me. I might need a concealer and all concealer is, is just very thick cream foundation. This I'm going to have to say um, is not full coverage enough for me to use it as a concealer. But you see where I'm going with this. You see that I could have easily just used this as a concealer if it was thick enough. For that reason, I'm gonna switch over to Old Faithful. This is my studio finish concealer. Now I'm getting rid of some of that dark circleage. 
dot of that in the center of my forehead, a little bit on my chin, around my mouth, just to cover up dark circles around my mouth because I am dark around the mouth. I'm also dark in this area right here. I guess that's my jowl. Jowl, it's such a terrible word. It sounds awful. I'm blending out my concealer under my eye. Now normally you would see me begin to cream contour. That is a step that I'm gonna skip entirely because again, this is, is focused on easy for running out the door to get to work. Okay, and the reason why you're looking at this video and you're saying, oh my God, this isn't simple. Uh, the reason you're saying that is because quite frankly, no, it is not five minute makeup. Five minute makeup is gonna look like five minute makeup no matter which way you slice it. If you take an extra 10 minutes, you can bang something out that's gonna last you through the day. So how do you blot yourself? You literally take a tissue and you blot. The way that I do makeup, you're not gonna have to add any product. The makeup is gonna stay on, you're just gonna get oily through the makeup. And then you blot to remove excess oil. Now the reason that I'm blotting right now is because I'm a little shiny. So before I begin to powder myself, before I begin to set the foundation, I have to remove that excess oil. That's why I blotted myself with the tissue. Now I can begin to set the face. I am doing that with a translucent powder, whichever translucent powder you prefer, that's what you can use. I'm focusing under the eye first because that's the first place that it begins to crease. Okay, and now that I've got under the eye set, because again, that's the first place that it's gonna start creasing, I can now put my translucent powder everywhere. Again, if it's put on correctly, it's not going to melt off. I've never used this product before, but I can pretty much guarantee you few hours from now, it's gonna look the same because I'm setting it properly and I'm just applying it properly. So that's why I say again, spend the extra time, y'all. Now that the face is set, I can focus on adding a little bit of contour, just taking a dark powder. You see how I'm still getting the contour without doing the cream underneath? Hit that hairline with it. I put on my tiny little winged eye. You could have just left it at exactly where we had it, just put on mascara. You didn't even have to put on an eyeliner. I am gonna take this highlight from Lancome, gorgeous. It is called Radiant Rose Gold Dew Finish, Dual Finish Highlight. And I'll go over top of that. Ooh, whoa, well that's friggin' gorgeous. Girls at work are gonna be mad at you, honey. I'm gonna use Inglot to put on my teeny little baby wing. Doing that with a brush from MAC, a 263. Now, obviously, we all know that wing liner is not easy. So again, you don't even have to put on eyeliner. Going back into our eyeshadow palette, I'm just gonna take a lighter brown, put it on a pencil brush, darkening under the eye. And I'm just gonna use a little mascara because I know that that is so much easier for you ladies than to put on a false lash. But as I'm doing this, I just want you to know, I don't do not a damn thing without a false lash on. So I just want you guys to see what it looks like without a lash. Looks perfectly fine. Go ahead and put your mascara on the bottom as well. This is also from the Monsieur Big collection from Lancome. You notice I didn't put any eyeliner on the bottom either because that really makes it more dramatic. And I think we already have enough drama going on. Perhaps if I didn't put eyeliner on the top, then I really would put eyeliner on the bottom. Lancome sent me some of this just for a tint because I don't want full lips on because I definitely already have dramatic enough eyes. This is Beige Vintage. Look at the applicator. I was a little confused as to how you got it on the applicator, but you shake it. Hear that little ball? It is a matte. I like this little point. Look at that, you can get right up against the tip. That is a brilliant shape for an applicator. Definitely loving this lip. That's called a matte shaker, by the way. Super cute and um, I think totally professional, but I cannot stand these lashes. I just, because I know how to put on lashes and it's a breeze for me to put them on. This fit to be a breeze. I'm gonna put on these overly dramatic eyebrows and we will watch this look transform. Uh, this is from a company called Love Lashes and they are the Layla's. I swear, I know that it's hard for you guys to put on lashes, I get it. But I promise you, you can do it. What, mink lashes. Yes, sister girl is minority, black owned. She sent me a few, so I hope you like them because she sent me all 
banging ones, like super pretty. What? Welcome to the jungle. We got fun and games. This is the way the good Lord intended it. You see how that took us to a whole other realm? <laughs> I need you guys to learn how to put on lashes because truth be told, if you want to do dramatic office makeup, you could do the same kind of makeup that I do every day of my life. Y'all know I don't wear eyeshadow. Y'all know I just pop a lash on, do my skin, and call it a day. That is all the drama I need. Not kidding. Really do hope you guys absolutely love these because I'm going to wear them every day of my life now. My camera cuts off, so I took it upon myself just to line the inner eye because I just didn't feel right. It could be as dramatic as you want it to be, but I'm glad that I was able to show you guys some variables. Of course, there will be a link down below for all of the products that I did use. You will also find links for um, Stellar Lighting Systems, which is the lighting ring light that I use to record my videos, as well as the lighting that I use to travel with if I am doing makeup on other people. There is a discount code for the ring lights. Please be sure that you are following me on my backup page. Um, I deleted my Instagram at 488,000 followers. I deleted it last week because I was frustrated with Instagram and I figured that maybe if I stopped my Instagram, that they would stop making my followers unfollow me. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I have this thing going on with Instagram. I don't know why they're doing it, but they are removing my followers by the thousands. I know this because people keep coming to me saying, I thought I was following you, but now I'm not, and I never unfollowed you. So I took it upon myself to deactivate my Instagram, um, and that scared the shit out of me, but I did it anyway because I'm losing people by the thousands, and I thought that maybe Instagram would stop doing whatever they're doing if I just deactivated the page. Um, I got scared and then I reactivated it a few hours later to make sure that I changed my password to something super extraordinarily hard so that nobody could hack my page while I had it deactivated. And once I went to deactivate it again after changing the password, uh, I was informed that you cannot delete your Instagram more than once a week. So it had to remain. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to deactivate it again. Um, I hope to God I don't lose followers. I hope to God I don't lose verification blue check mark. I hope to God that I don't lose way more followers than I'm already losing. But I, it's a risk that I have to take because Instagram is not writing me back. They're not communicating with me. And I'm just losing thousands and thousands and thousands of people um, per month. So please do make sure that you're following my backup page. I really hope you guys like the tutorial and I will see you back here very soon. Thanks. Bye.